hello all welcome to html tutorials this is anil and today i'm going to teach you the first class basic programming of html language basically html is a programming language i call it a web programming language and html stands for hypertext markup language markups in the sense is also called as tags and in html basically we have two types of tags they are container tags and non container tags container tags and non container tags are also called as or uh, container tags are also called as paid tags and non container tags called as unpaid tags unpaid tags some of the examples of container tags and non container tags are uh, let us consider container tags in the sense which is having an opening tag and a closing tag and non container tags in the sense it it will be having only a opening tag but there is no case of closing tag in html most of the tags are container tags and very less are non container tags and each and every tag has its own importance and specification uh, some examples of container tags are let us consider body tag b o d y body tag open body tag close whatever we give inside this body open body close that will be displayed in the text area of the page i mean on the page whatever the text we give in this body section that will displayed on the page and one more example of container tag is let us consider it as head tag and head close if we have a closing tag then that is that tag is called as container tag and if we come to non container tags some of the examples of non container tags are first of all we can take it as break tag which is having an opening but there is no closing and we can consider it as hr tag like horizontal line if you want to display a horizontal line below of the text as a heading then we can use horizontal row that is called hr tag and we have some more non container tags but as of now as the as with this to this with this class i'm going to teach you the basic program of html for that the minimum knowledge required is the html is basically a tags programming so this these two types of tags are available in html so if we go to the basic programming of html uh, if we i'm going to use a notepad as a text editor this is what the notepad we call it as we it will be helpful for you, us to create or to write some code in the form of tags and if we want to display the output of that source code we use google chrome or internet explorer or mozilla firefox any browser browser is an output device to render the code and as for now i am using text editor as the notepad and output device as the google chrome so i am opening another notepad i am writing the basic program of html html open html closing and html programming consists of two sections basically that is head tag open head tag close and body tag open body tag close basically html program consists of two sections the first section is head head section and the second section is body section these two sections have their own importance 
like if you head section is basically used to dis used to display the information about the page and body section is used to display the content on the web browser i mean if i want to display something on the page i use this body section and i want to say what kind of content it is or what page it is that i will be telling by using head tag so head tag head section contains some tags like title tag as of now i'm using only title tag and the remain tags i will be telling in the next classes title tag is a tag which is used to display the name of the page on the browser in the top left corner like i am taking this as a demo page title open title close that's it now head section is completed and for body section i am writing a small piece of line like hi welcome welcome to the first basic program html program dot that's it to display this line of text on the browser i'm going to save this page i'm selecting the target directory as desktop and to save any html file the best practice is to place that name of the uh, html file with an extension dot html in double quotes i am going to place this in double quotes i am taking the page name as demo dot html double quotes closing now i am going to save this one once again i am selecting the desktop as a target directory saving now this source code has been saved in the desktop as demo dot html so i am opening the desktop now desktop we are having a demo page here i am opening it in browser now this is the first basic program hi welcome to the first basic html program that's it and we can do some modifications uh, depending upon the requirements like increasing the size of the line like we can use some tags like heading tags as of now i'm using h1 tag like head, heading 1 close head tag and saving i am going to save this one save i am switching back to the browser and i am refresh i am going to refresh it see the line of text size has been increased this is done due to this h1 tag this is called heading tag and we have like other five tags like heading tags in html i am copying this line of text i am placing in the same way i am copying these three lines of text i am taking this as h2 this also h2 h3 h3 h4 h4 h5 h5 and the final one is h6 and each and every heading tag has its own importance see now we have six lines of code and it is different for each and everything is different like first line is an heading 1 second one is heading 2 third one is at heading 3 heading 4 heading 5 heading 6 now i'm going to save this and i want to see the output for this page i am going to refresh this one see this is the kind of rendering the page based on the source code what we have written earlier yes this is the magic that we can do with html and thanks for watching the first basic html program and keep watching my tutorial i i will be teaching all the basic 
and advanced level of HTML programming in the next session of classes. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello all, welcome to HTML tutorials. This is Anil again in class 2. Today I am going to teach you some basic tags like comments tag, paragraph tag, break tag, hr tag and image tag and followed by its attributes like src, alt, title and some of the other attributes of these tags. In html we have some tags like basic tags this is the comment section tag this is the starting of the tag and this is the ending of the tag of comment section tag whatever we write between these left and right tags that is called the comment comment in the sense that will be useful for the programmer to know about the code or about the program or to define anything as a rough work and that will not be displayed on the web page on the front end to end user if you want to write anything on the source code and that code should not be rendered on the web page for the end user then we can write put that code in this comment section field i mean like suppose if i write anything like this is this is a comment section And this text will not be displayed to the user on the web page and we can write this tag in so many ways we can write it in a single line or we can write this code in this way also and now this is called a comment section tag and if you come to the paragraph tag as normally in a writing of some text in paragraphs we basically give one line of space for the above sentence and one line of space for the below sentence that the middle one is called a paragraph so in html also we can put paragraphs by using this p tag and the next tag is image tag if we go to this web page this is an image if we want to put some images on the web, pa web page then we can use image tag to put an image on the web page we use this image tag and followed by its attributes like alt attribute title attribute src src is the basic attribute used for image tag uh, which specifies the location of the image src stands for source which specifies the source location from where we are taking the image that will be defined in this src attribute and alt attribute is an attribute which specifies the name of the image in case of unavailability of the image in the source location or due to some technical reasons if the image is corrupted or image is removed from the source location in that case if the image is not able to render or not able to publish on the web page in some cases in that cases we can use this alt attribute which specifies the name of the image and comes to title attribute title attribute gives the name of the image when we hover our mouse on the image and next border for every image generally images will be in a rectangular shape or in a square shape for every image there will be a border like rectangle border or square square border that if if you won't give border value then it will be zero and there will be no border for the image if you give one there will be a slight border for the image and in the same way we can give width and height for the images also and next tag is hr tag hr tag in the sense horizontal rule or we can show i can show you that this is the horizontal line below the i am doing great text if if we closely observe a line is drawn below the text entire the screen in horizontally that is called horizontal line if you want to place an horizontal line below the text we can use this hr tag 
and the next one is br tag br stands for break and if you go to this page and this first sentence is separated by the single line of space with the second sentence this line of break will be provided by using this br tag if you give one br there will be only one line of space and if you give multiple brs like two then it will be two lines of space in vertical wise if you give three brs it will be three line three lines of space i mean two lines of space if we go to the example see this is the scratch which was our developed a scratch program see here this is the comment section i am specifying the name of the page like a demo program and some basic tags like comment tag p tag br tag hr tag this is a general information for the programmer to know in future purpose for future purpose if the programmer will come if, if the programmer come back to the program and see what actually the program is he, he can see by reading this comment section this comment section may be useful uh, uh, in specifying the program name also it help, it will be helpful in uh, writing the code and in specifying what type of code it is uh, for the programmer for future purpose this we can give in this way or we can put in this way also like now see this is the opening tag for the comment section this is the closing tag for the comment section less than apostrophe hyphen hyphen is the close opening tag hyphen hyphen and greater than symbol is the closing tag for the comment section whatever we put below or inside this opening and closing that will become a comment and that will not be displayed on the web page for the end user and as we all know this is the html syntax html open html close head open head close in between this head we are we're using a title tag and title close title that will be displayed on the page left corner on the top of the page this text will be displayed on the browser left corner top and whatever we write in the body section that will be displayed on the page for the end user so for now i am writing a simple line of code like hi how are you doing i will save this one on the desktop i want to save this in a folder like image program here i am saving this page which with the demo dot html double quotes open double demo dot html desktop image program this is the location i want to save i've saved it now i will go back to the desktop image program here we have a demo i will open it now see hi how are you doing and i again i will write one more code like yes yeah i'm doing good don't expect that this will be coming in uh, line by line so if we go to the output and if we refresh this that will be displayed in a single line so to give a line break we use break tag this this is the break tag this is the break tag br i will copy this one i will come back to this one and where we want where we need a break there we can give a br tag in general here and be sure of this one and also i'm giving at the end of this one and i will save now i will refresh the page now we got one line of break and if you want more lines of break then we can add some more brs like control c control v control v control v 
and control V. Yes, we got multiple lines of break. Now, how to insert an horizontal line? If I want to insert an horizontal line below this line, by the way, how are you doing? I will place an HR tag here. Save this. See in the browser. Yes, we got an HR tag, but we have we got two lines of space in vertically below this line of text. So I want to remove that one. I can remove this BR tag. Yes, no. This be this is fine now. We got horizontal line, and if you place anything text below this one by the way our doing yes i'm also doing good now we will save this one we will go back to this one and we will refresh see this is the wonderful concept of html i have not given a br but it's still on the next line because hr doesn't require a br tag HR by default gives one line of break with horizontal line. This is the most useful thing of HR tag. In case if 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 we need a break and a horizontal line, then we can use HR. If we need a horizontal line, also we can use HR, but we'll get one line of break. And the next concept I'm going to teach you is image tag. image tag how to put an image in the page now if you go to this page we don't have an image here i just want to put an image on this page so how can we put an image on the page for that before going to uh, do the rough work on the images or image tag let me introduce what type of images are actually we have in the market uh, I have collected some information about the images. I will show you now. Basically, there are three types of images. Basically, them there are multiple, but we mostly use these three types of image formats. First one is JPEG. Second one is PNG. Third one is GIF. And JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. And PNG stands for Portable Network Graphics Format. And GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format. And these three types of formats have their own differences and uses. JPG is a normal type of phot photograph or normal type of image. And PNG stands for transparent images. Like for every image there will be a border and a background color. If we don't want a background color and if we want to make the background color as transparent then we can use PNG images and if if you want to use animations in an image like animated images we can use GIF images but this kind of animations or transparency is not available in JPEG JPEGs are normal photographs and PNG are best useful for transparent images GIFs are useful for animated images and JPEG extension is .jpg if a file with a .jpg extension is called JPEG image and if a file extension is with .png, it is called PNG and .gif is called GIF image. So I have collected some three types of image formats. Now if we, if we have a close look on these images, we can get the information. First I will open the J JPG image. See this is the JPG image, it's a normal photograph without any transparency or any animation. It's a normal photograph this is jpeg image if i open a png image see this is a png image which is having a border but that background but that background is transparent transparent in the sense which doesn't have any background color whatever the color for the background is there that will be displayed on the image if If we come across with a GIF image, GIF image is nothing but animated image. If we have any animations on the image, that 
animations will be clearly displayed on the image this is actually an image but it's a gif image so now i am using all these three images in my page and i'll show you how can we render image on a page and how many types of images we can put on a page if we go to the page source code this is the page source code i am inserting the image tag i am just copying the image tag and i am pasting here after this good now as we know my page is under desktop i have a folder image program in that image program i have created a demo program this is the page where i have created in the same folder we have the images so i can directly put the image name in the src otherwise if the images are present in some other location then we need to give the entire path of the image like this is the path we can say copy address as text or edit address here this is the path followed by this path i need to give slash slash dot this one any on any one of the images like but luckily we have all these three images in the same folder so there is no necessity of giving this address if the images are present on some other location or some other folder then we need to give the entire address so as of now i'm just giving the image name first i will give the jpeg name what it's a jpeg name i'm copying this name pay copying the file name i'm putting src dot it's a jpeg right jpg how we know it's a jpeg or some other type of image for that we can right click on the image and we go to the properties here we can see this is a jpg file dot jpg by this we can give the extension as jpg or gif or png depending on this this is the image name now i will save this one i will check it on browser now we got an image but that image is side of the text but not below the text so what i should do i should i should we are as we know we are familiar with br tag we can give br tag here but instead of giving br tag if i give a p tag p in the sense paragraph tag and i will close this one p is not a single tag like non container tag it's a container tag so it it will be having a closing tag p is an opening tag and slash p is a closing tag now i'm placing this one in a p tag now i'll check it out whether it will display in the next line or not yes we got it in next line so but this image is left aligned i want to put it in a middle or right so i can use p align align equal to right see this is aligned right now in the same way i will copy this and i will paste it for the rest of the images here in place of jpg image i use other image names like gif image png image gif image png image it is not compulsory to give gif image for a jp uh, gif image type here i am changing the extension this is very important png now i will save this one i will go to the browser and i will refresh it now we got all the images on the right side aligned but these images are different in dimensions like length wise or width wise so i will give some dimensions like 300 pixel width 300 pixel height let it be unique for all the images so that it looks good on the page now i will save this one we'll check it on browser again once again 
now we got all the images see this is the jpeg image which is having a border border uh, border in the sense background image if we closely observe this one this s this phi this is called an png image which doesn't have a rectangular type or square type of background the the background of this phi symbol is transparent so whatever the background of the page that will be displayed as a background for this image if i change the background of the web page like here we can change the background of the image like body bg color equal to line or any color as you wish now if we observe it is now white for this phi image this is a png image now see it is lime for this one and if we, if if we apply a border then it will be more explanatory for you to understand what an png image is i am applying a border for all the images now every image will be in a rectangular or square shape so but this phi symbol is not in a square shape or rectangular shape it is having just a vertical cone type of symbol if we apply a border then we can understand see this is actually an image but the space between the border and this cone type of red color is called the background that is transparent this is first one is jpeg second one is gif third one is png and let let me let me put this is to left and the, let me put this is to center not left and this is to right this is to left and first one to left and the ft now we will save it and we'll check now this is left this is center this is right now good let me do this is to 100 100 because it is um, capturing maximum amount of vertical size so in this way we can modify the dimensions of the images also and it's very important to explain you this alt attribute title attribute because in case by seeing the page we can understand that this is a pre and this is some animated and this is like phi symbol so if the end user wants to know what actually it is and if we give here in place of title i am giving it as a tree and second one as animator or animation and for third one i am giving it as phi i will save this one i am giving all the values in the title fields of the image tags what happens if we give title value and if we refresh this one then the code gets e executed or activated when we place the mouse over the image we are getting some text and in the sense we are giving some extra information about the page to the end user by this the end user may know what actually this image is this is called giving extra information about the page, about the image and in the same way we can give the same value name value to alt attribute but this alt attribute works in a different way but this alt value will not be displayed on the web page when the image is available i mean if the image is absent or if the image is not there on the source location or if the image is corrupted or if the image is deleted due to some technical problems if the image is getting delayed or if the image is very big a lengthy one or which is having a maximum amount of data or if if the net speed is very slow in that cases this alt attribute will be very useful before rendering that entire image on the page before that this tree 
or this name whatever the value we give in the alt attribute that will displayed on the page and later the image will be displayed here i will be taking it as animation and here five so i will refresh this one nothing we can see when when we delete these images from the source uh let me delete this jpg image so i am remo removing this image from the source location i mean from this location means users desktop image program this is the location of the program so i am i have removed the jpeg image and i refresh this one see here we got a tree name and we have a tree when we hover on the image this is this tree this tree whatever the tree we are now able to see that is from alt value and now this tree is due to hovering over the image this is from title and that one from the alt attribute in the same way if we delete all this one all the two images from this folder and if we refresh this page see animation 5 alt attribute will be useful to give a name to the image when the image is absent that's all for today and today we have learned so many tags like comment section tag p tag image tag hr tag br tag and also we have learned some attributes like src alt title border width and height thanks for watching my video and keep comments on my videos and if you have any doubts please place comments on my video or you about your doubts i will be solving your doubts thanks for watching keep watching bye bye hello hi i am anil back in class 3 of html tutorials and today i am going to teach you about hyperlink uh, hyperlink is a concept which is used to link some other or external or outside of the links into the our website i mean linking some other websites in our page is called hyperlinking and the text which is useful in the hyperlink is called hypertext i mean uh, i can show you the example of hypertext see this is this is the syntax of hyperlink ye ye stands for anchor this anchor tag is useful to hyperlink this text with the url which is provided in the href right now we don't have any url in the href this is the syntax href stands for hyper reference which gives the url of the page to which we want to migrate or which we want to navigate and this target attribute also specifies whether the redirecting page should be opened in the self window or in a new window depending upon the target value the hyperlink page will be opened in respective of the target provider and title is sim simple and it is same as in image tag which displays the name of the text what we give in the title value that will be displayed when we hover our mouse over on the hypertext in the page this this is the syntax of hyperlinking and this is the text is called hypertext and this hyperlinking tag is a container tag which is having an opening and closing tag and in this tutorial i am going to teach you what is an a hyperlink and how we can hyperlink and also the way in which we can open the hyperlink in a new window or in a self window we have three values like underscore new underscore value underscore blank and underscore self these two values are quite similar which opens in a new window and the self which specifies 
uh, which tells the browser to open the href location page or href href site in the self window by default if you won't provide any target value that will be open in a self window that is the default value and coming to the body section if we provide these attributes like link equal to green v link equal to blue and a link equal to red these are the attributes for hyperlink the link link stands for normal link which is not activated or which is not visited i mean it's a fresh link if we open it, the page for the first time the link will be appeared in green color and v link stands for visitor link once the link has been visited or it has been clicked then that will be turned into blue color and a link stands for active link at the time of pressing the link it will be turned into red color and when we release the mouse left side of the mouse we release the mouse then it will turn into the normal blue color these are the three attributes provided for hyperlink concept link is nothing but normal link for the first time and v link for the visitor link will be turned into blue color and active link at the time of clicking the link it will be turned into red color these values can be changed depending upon our requirements we can change the colors like green to blue blue to green blue to red red to blue that depends upon the requirement and coming to the graphical hyperlinking not only we can hyperlink the text we can also link the graphics like images in the place of text instead of text goes here we can place with an image also that also we are going to discuss today and finally in the image tag in the last class i have not said about v space and h space these two are the two new attributes today i am going to discuss and the border attribute these are the three attributes today i am going to discuss in this tutorial in this class and coming to the program here i already written the program the sample program and this is the comment section opening and closing and this line of code will not be displayed on the browser because it is a comment section program which specifies the name of the program for our own use or for our future purpose program on external hyperlink tag or anchor tag this is a program on external hyperlink or anch anchor tag and hyperlinks are also can be done in two ways like external hyperlink and internal hyperlink today in this class we are going to discuss about purely about external hyperlinks and in class 4 we will be discussing about internal hyperlinks internal hyperlinks are also called as bookmarks or inline hyperlinks external hyperlinks in the sense we are going to hyperlink some other external sites in our site or in our web page we are going to link some other web, web, web some others web pages or websites urls in our web page that is called external hyperlink and today that we are going to discuss now that these these sections are familiar as we are which pretty much familiar with these two sections head section and body section in class 1 and class 2 and coming to this one this is the syntax of hyperlinking a href equals to double quotes target equals to double quotes title equals to double quotes and closing anchor tag opening anchor tag and closing anchor tag now we are going to place values in this href stands for hyper reference here we are going to give the url of the website like url in the sense uniform resource locator url stands for uniform resource locator uniform resource locator in the sense the address of the website uh, for example we can have google.com like http http colon slash slash www dot google dot com this is called url or another example of it is http colon slash slash www dot gmail dot com or http colon slash slash www dot facebook dot com this is another site these these are the examples of the urls u r l uniform resource locator 
based on the uniform resource locator we will redirect to, to the particular h referred value so now we are taking the first one as google.com copying it and we will go to the program here in place of href i am placing this one a a href equals to http colon slash slash www dot google dot com space and target i am giving as i already said about the target in this tutorial earlier that is underscore new underscore blank underscore self and we can give any one of these values uh, as of now i am giving underscore new i mean i just want to open this google dot com page in a new window not in the self window in which we are viewing the page and title as you all are much familiar with this one i am giving uh, this is the Go this website is about the google dot com so we are going redirecting to google dot com so i am giving the title as google and i am saving now this one i am going to the directory desktop this is the folder where i have created this one i am opening it it has opened but nothing is displayed on the web page because i have not given the vat hyper text here as of now i am giving some text like google save it switch back to mozilla firefox now refresh it you can see google now it is in blue color right and it is left top corner so i just want to make it center i am placing a center tag here c e n t e r center yes center now save it go it to e web browser and refresh it now it is in center okay right now i just want to change the colors yes now copy it go to hyperlink and place the code beside of the body now save it open it in browser and refresh it now see it is in green color this is in green color now now when i click it at the time of clicking it it turns into red and after click down it turns into blue color and it opens in a new window because i have given the target as underscore new now turn it red color and it open a new window now see it is it again turn into blue color now again when i click it it turns to red again blue red blue but it never changed to green because at the first time only it, it it will be shown in a green color because it is a link now at the time of clicking it is an active link and after click it, it becomes an visitor link this is the concept of attributes of link v link and active link now coming to explain the graphical hyperlinks i am placing this image tag here in in place of this google in place of google i just want to show something different like image or something like graphics so i just want to show image in place of this one i am placing this image tag i am uh, minimizing the font size to look everything in a single line now see image src equals to src is not provided because to fetch the location of the image from which directory we are going to take the image that is not provided here i am going to provide now and title is not provided alt is not provided alter alternate name and height is given as 50 width is given as 100 and border is given as 0 v space is given as this is the these are the two these are the three new attributes which i am going to discuss about today border for every image when we put it in hyperlink then border will be displayed with the blue color line when we not give it as zero it will be displayed in blue border if we give zero border will not be displayed and vertical space vertical space in the sense it gives some space from vertically upwards 50 pixels of space will be provided for the image from the top to bottom 
and horizontal space that is left to the image 50 pixel will be provided from the left and 50 pixel will be provided from the top for v space from the top and h space for the left so the image will be moved little bit uh, right side and bottom side with 50 pixel margin now i am going to place um now i am taking the image url this is the flowers copy and it's a jpeg here i am pasting the jpeg and title i am giving it as flower flowers and alternate name also flowers and height is 50 width is 100 border equal to i am not specifying any border now we will see later we will remove the border by giving it as zero now i have removed the border and also i am not giving this vertical space or something as of now i am removing everything and i am saving it now now it has been saved in in place of this google it will be replaced with an image once i refresh the page now it has been replaced now see flowers it has been flower when i click it it opens the google it has opened the google page now we will come back to the page and here I am giving this one border equal to 1 and I am saving it coming back to page see now it is uh, almost to the top it will come little bit down now when I refresh this page now it's see it, it has given 50 pixel margin from the top and 50 pixel margin from the left And this is what the external hyperlinking concept and I hope you enjoyed this video and keep watching my videos and thank you. Hello all welcome to HTML tutorials this is class 4 Anil again and today I am going to teach you inline hyperlinking concept. Inline hyperlinking is nothing but which is a concept used to uh, hyperlink within the page. I mean if, if, if we come across with a very lengthy page in vertically then we can use this hyperlink concept uh, instead of navigating from top to bottom unnecessarily like scrolling the mouse we can just by clicking some link on the top of the page we can just navigate to the bottom of the page and in the vice versa if we click on the bottom of the page we get we get navigate to the top of the page by using this hyperlinking concept yesterday in class 3 we have learned about external hyperlinking that's a very simple concept that linking the uh, external website within our web page is called external hyperlinking and this is inline hyperlinking inline hyperlinking in the sense uh, hyperlinking some part some text in within the page is called inline hyperlinking uh, let us assume this is the syntax a href equal to hash a href equal to hash and name equals to the anchor tag name and this is called the hypertext and this is what the part in which we are going to link the hyperlink so for example if we open a very big page this is the page I am placing this very very lengthy code on the page To make the page very lengthy so I'm placing this junk code I'm saving this page on the desktop taking the page name as inline hyperlink dot HTML double quotes save it now we have we got a page on the desktop we will open it in uh, Google Chrome now we can see this is a very lengthy page and we have a vertical scroll bar here now in case if we want to go down we need to scroll otherwise if, if you put a hyperlink at the top of the page and if the end user 
wants to go to the bottom of the page by seeing the hyperlink he can click on the down hyperlink so that it takes the customer or the end user to the bottom of the page in this way we have reached the bottom of the page in the same way we can use this hyperlinking concept in the bottom of the page to go to the top of the page that we can see now here by making some small ex uh, changes on the page like now see here if we close if we have a look on this code this is the hypertext on which we are clicking so that we are navigating to the bottom of the page so this is the name attribute is very very important in this hyperlinking concept inline hyperlinking concept we as for now we gave the name value as top and href equals to hash bottom so hash is the compulsory code that we need to put before of the name value this bottom is actually a name value which we are created earlier in the bottom for example see here name a anchor tag with the name bottom we have created with an empty with no hypertext with no hypertext we have created an empty hy hyperlink with the name bottom so we are using this name value in our inline hyperlinking concept and we are placing that name value bottom followed by hash so that it tells the browser that we are giving an inline hyperlinking so this concept works when the customer is at the top of the page so that when he clicks on the down hypertext it will make the user to reach the bottom of the page in the same way if the user reach the bottom of the page in this, if he wants to go to the top of the page simply we can give we can take the name of this hyperlink here the name of the hyperlink is top so we are copying it and we are going to the bottom of the page and here we are placing href equals to hash top and in hypertext we are giving it as top and saving the page switching back to the google chrome refresh it now see we have a down bottom of the top of the page when we click on the down button down link we will reach the top we will reach the bottom of the page now we reach the bottom of the page when once we click on top link we have to reach the top of the page yes we reach the top of the page this is working and this is a super concept thanks for watching my tutorial keep watching bye bye hello all welcome to html tutorials this is anil in class 5 today i am going to teach you a program on table in html uh, as we all know table in the sense it's a group of or uh, a collection of rows and columns for example we can i can show you a table see this is called a table with this horizontal line is called a row and this vertical group of lines are called as columns this is called a column and this is called a row so group of all these rows this is first row combination of first and second third fourth fifth these is called combination of rows in the same way this is first column this is second column this is third column and this is fourth column a table can have n number of columns and n number of rows combination of columns and rows is called a table so in html how to create an html table we have a table tag this is called a table tag by using table tag we can create an html table i have uh, these are the tags this is a table tag which is used to create a table or used to define a table and tr stands for table row this tr tells the browser to give a row in the table and this is called table header 
and for every table there will be a heading a row and that should be in little bit different to the table data so the td stands for table data or content of the table so if you go to the program of the table in html this is the basic program i have already written table open table close and tr stands for table row i am going to create now 2 by 2 table 2 by 2 in the sense first two stands for rows and second two stands for columns 2 by 2 2 by 2 2 by 2 table and here this is called these two is called rows and these two are called as columns so i am creating now two rows and two columns means totally four cells here i am deleting this one i am deleting this one first I have created a table in which I have created a TR and TR closing means now a table has one row in that one row I am creating first column so TH open I am writing it as serial number TH close and another column th open its name th close now i will save this program and we'll see the output on the browser i am saving it in desktop with the name table dot html save this one Saved it. Go into the stop. We have a table program here. Open with Google Chrome. Now we have a table, but there is no border for the table. So we can give a border for the table. That border is an attribute that we should give in the top level beside of the table tag. Border equal to one save it come to browser refresh it now we got a border for two cells this is first column and this is second column now if you want to put or insert another row i'm just copying tr tr stands for row so another row here instead of th i'm using td for every table the first row usually we take it as a heading row or header row so that we will put in table heading for to show that in bold letters or to discriminate it with the normal data in the table now i am giving it as one and name as anil saving see now we got see this s number so let let me put this table align at center so that align i am aligning this table at center i am using an attribute align equal center now it is in center and i would like to put it a little bit down so i am using some break tag three breaks I have used it here now if we closely observe I am inserting another row this is two this is so many 
save this file refresh it now see the top row is called table header now that is in bold letters and the below rows are called table data rows those are normal rows so that are unbold so to represent a header row we use th tag to represent a header row we use th tag this is header row and these two are the below rows which contains data and th stands for table header and td stands for table data now also we can give width for the table by using width attribute width equals to 200 now we in this way we can give width to a table and we can also align the content of the cell to left or right or in center by using align attributes now here we if we observe serial number and name are aligned at center and the table data are aligned at left so i want to align this table data also to center so i use table data align equal to center i will copy this text Control C. I will paste in all the TDs. Now, all these texts are also aligned at center. And in the same way, we can give background for this one, like BG color equal to lime. I'll copy this one. Here this one and in the same way this is for the heading also if we consider it as yellow see this is way this is the way we can view backgrounds to table also and we have so many attributes that we will be learning in the next class this is the these are the basic concepts belongs to table attribute thanks for watching my video keep comments thank you bye bye hello hi welcome to html tutorials we are in class 6 this class 6 is an extension of class y what we have learned in class y which is a table tag and today we are going to discuss about some other most important attributes of table tag what are the most important attributes of table tag that we will be going with our deck what have created the most two important concepts of table tag are first one is cell spacing second one is cell padding what actually a cell spacing is cell spacing is nothing but providing some room or space between cells what do you mean by cell? Cell is nothing but a box in which the content can be kept and combination of those boxes is called a table. So what actually a cell padding is? Cell padding is nothing but providing some space or room between the cells and its content but not the room between the cells. Cell spacing is nothing but providing space between the cells and cell padding is nothing but providing a space between the content of the cell and its cell so if we have a look at the um, graphical interface cell spacing what actually this is a normal table without any cell spacing 
this is a normal table without any cell spacing if we apply cell spacing equal to some value like 30 then each cell will be this is a cell this is another cell each cell will be separated with a certain amount of width and height that whatever the height and width is nothing but a value what we provide for a cell spacing value that value depending on that value each and every cell in the table will be separated in this way now see it has been separated through height wise and also through width wise this is called cell spacing separating the cells with another cell is called cell spacing then what do you mean by cell padding cell padding this is the normal table if we apply cell padding with some value let us consider it as a 30 then it will be look like this see this is the content actually s number is in a content name is the content of the cell that content and the cell will be separated with the value what we provided that value is called cell padding value now here see this is the one and the one in the normal it will be in, in this way if we apply cell padding then this value anil will be separated with the cell with some amount of space so this is called cell padding i hope you understand what you mean by cell spacing and cell padding so we will look at it in our program view see this is what the program we have created in the last class if we go with the code wise this is the code this is the only option this is the only value this is the only attribute we added in this program that is cell spacing equal 0 and cell padding equal 0 if we won't give anything then the program then the output will be in this way if I apply anything like if we, this is the same program if you apply cell spacing equal 30 and if I if I save this and we will check out what would be the output for this one I am refreshing it see I have applied cell spacing equal to 30 and then the cells are separated with the value of 30 if I remove this one 30 and if I apply cell padding equal 30 and if I save this one and if I refresh it then this is called cell padding we can even we can apply both at a time cell spacing equal 30 cell padding equal 30 then see this is the way we can figure out the table that it is not mandatory to give only 30 it, it depends upon us it's up to you you can give 50 here we can you can give like 100 depending upon your requirement see how the table look like this is the way we can figure out the table by using cell spacing and cell padding if you have any doubts please keep comments thanks for watching bye bye hi welcome to html tutorials today we are in class 7 this is an extension of class y in class y i have told you how to create a table by using table tag and in class 7 we are going to learn the extension of that table tag i mean some more attributes of table tag like row span and call span uh, row span and call span are basically used to merge columns or rows in a table i mean merging in the sense if we have a necessity of clubbing more number of columns into a single column or to club more number of rows into a single row that necessity is called spanning of rows or spanning of columns so we will go with the deck what i have created right now this is what the deck actually i have created spanning rows and spanning columns in short we can call as row span or call span this is what a typical table we have actually in the, to, to appear it looks like a 4x4 four four table I mean 4 rows and 4 columns but it's but if you go in depth of that and if you see keenly if you observe then it looks like a 5x6 table I mean 5 rows and 6 table we will see how the rows and columns are clubbed and how they are actually in if you go with individual row or individual column how it looks like first we will go with the row wise so this is the first row actually that has been clubbed into a single row this is the second row this is the third row fourth row fifth row in this table the topmost two rows 
see these two rows are club and gave a single cell I mean this is what this is an cell comes with an combination of these two rows this is the first row and this is the second row combination of these two rows gives another cell we are clubbing these two rows actually this is the first row and this is the second row we are clubbing these two rows and we are getting this individual cells in row wise and this is the third one this is also a clubbed row so this is called spanning of rows and if we go with the next example this is called spanning of columns spanning of columns if we keenly observe this table this is the first column this is the second column third column fourth column fifth column and sixth column in this table these three the third fourth fifth columns are clubbed to give an age column see these are the three columns actually are merged into a single column that is age column this is the way we can spanning of columns can be done this is what a six column table and today we can call this table as five by six table or five rows on six columns table so if you go with the program wise this is what the code which I have written already we will place this aside and we will run the code actually in a Google Chrome this is what the Google Chrome and this is what the output see if you go with the code wise I will explain each and every line don't worry it's very simple and easy see the first line this is what we you have learned in earlier classes HTML head section and this is the body section this is the body section body section open and this is the table tag which we have inserted in the body table and we gave the attributes as border equal to 1 and align equal center and cell spacing equal 0 and cell padding equal 3 this is what cell spacing and cell padding we I have told you in the last class if we give this as 0 and if you save this and if you see the output see this is what the shrinking of the cells so for look and feel I am giving it as 3 and cell spacing equal 0 see this is the table now actually today's concept is row span call span see this table actually consists of 5 rows and 6 columns so to develop a table with 5 rows and 6 columns we need 5 TRs to generate a row we need TR and to generate a column or a cell we need TD or TH TH and TD both are same I mean this is the way TD TD equals to TH these two attributes are same the necessity of using TH is if the topmost row for every table is a column heading column row so to specify that the heading row we use TH and rest of the rows we use TD in the in this table we have two heading rows the first to topmost row is consisting of age and the second row is, is consisting of some three cells which are not merged like above 1825 above 25 above 50 these all these things will come see if we closely observe this is what a table if we, I open see this is what in TR in first TR we have 4 TH why because if we go to this one image see this is the first row actually this is the first row this is the first row and this is the second row here these two rows are combinedly to give this cell and here these two combine to give this cell and this two rows combine to give this cell and so for that reason what we are doing is we have given four THS 
four th tags. First one for s number, second one for name, third one for age, and fourth one for department. Four ths are given in the first tr. See, and if if you see clearly, the for third one we have gave call span equal to three, and the rest we gave row span equal to two. So here for the first cell, we are going to match the rows. So we have used row span here. This is what the row span. And for second cell name, also we are matching the first and second row. So we are used row span. And in case of third cell, we just want to combine the columns. That's the reason we are using call span here. So what we are using call span? We are used. We are telling the uh, system uh, that this age is a cell. It's a combination of three cells. That is what this call span represents. So it allocates three cells of space to age. And for the next one, th, we are giving row span because we want to combine this one. Department is a combination of first and second row. So we have used row span here with value 2. If we give 3, then what happens? We will check it. It takes 3 lines of code. We will save this one and we will go here and we will refresh it. See, this department has taken 3 lines, 3 rows of space. See, this is what the department, this is the first row, this is the second row and this is what the third row. These 3 rows combinedly gives to department. This is what a Row span is so depending upon the requirement we can change the value here 2 is enough we will save this one and we will come back to the program and we will refresh it so this is what the program and in case for the second row for the second row first in the first row we have already given th equal to th row span equal to 2 so in the second row there is no necessity of giving the uh, t no need of defining td value or th value because the cell is already defined in the topmost row and for this also the cell is already defined so now we have to give only these three cells definition here so that we have giving that we have given here th equal to above 25 above 25 above 50 and in third row as normal how you create a normal table in the third row we are we need to have one two three 4, 5, 6 stages. So we definitely give 6 stages and we will give the appropriate values. And finally in the 5th fifth, fifth row, 4th fourth row the same, 6 columns, 6 cells and in 5th row also same. This is what how we can create a row span and call span table. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any doubts please keep comments. I will definitely clarify your doubts. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hi guys, welcome to HTML Tutorials. This is Anil once again back in this tutorial. Today I am going to teach you about the list in HTML and there are various lists available in HTML that today we are going to discuss. And if you go with our deck, what are lists in HTML? A list are the basic way of presenting the items or points in the form of bullets or numbering system, lettering system in some progression or the sequenced fashion. Basically lists are of three types. First one is unordered list, second one is ordered list, third one is definition or description list. If you go to the details of each and every list, unordered list is nothing but it is a list in it, it can be presented in the form of bullets. I mean each and every point can be presented in the form of bullets or any graphics but in HTML we can present the unordered list in the form of disk or square or circle. These three types of uh, graphics we can produce in HTML and coming to the order list, order list is a way of presenting the items or present in the form of numbering system, lettering system or Roman number fashion system or in any other sequenced fashion. And coming to the third and the last one, definition or description list. 
definition list organize terms and their definitions in pairs like we give some heading and if we give the description of that heading is nothing but a definition list the combination of all those pairs is nothing but a definition or description list if you go to the in depth of the output of these lists this would be the best example for that if i show you this this is what the best example see this is the example of order list putting some bullet points or some disk points or some circle points in front of the text and presenting it in a form of a bulleting points is called an order list and if you come to the second list type that is order list presenting the text in the form of numbering system like 1 2 3 or we can we, we have an option to facilitate the ordering number also instead of giving one as the first point we can change that point to 3 4 5 or 7 8 9 we can alter the start point of the order list we have a facility in html by using attribute start and the third list is definition or description list this is what here t if you clearly observe this one t t is nothing but data definition and this is data description milk definition term definition description definition term definition description definition term definition description the combination of all these dd and dd is called a definition list d definition list tag is nothing but a dl and this is nothing but a definition term dt and this is dd if we go to in depth of the code point of view of this all these codes as per this class today we will be discussing only order list and in the next 9th and 10th classes, we will be discussing order list and definition list. Today, we are going to discuss about an order list and what are the various types of an order list and how many ways we can render the an order list in HTML. All these topics we will be covering today. So, as of now, I am closing this order list and an order list. See, this is what an unorder list looks like in HTML. This is what simple unorder list. How we can generate this unorder list? We will go to the code point of view first, and later we'll come to the various types of unorder list. This is what a simple HTML structure. HTML open, HTML open, body open, and you forget about this one. and body close html close now this is what we need to concentrate this is what an h2 tag header tag this is you all are familiar with this h2 tag to give a side heading we use h2 tags or h1 or h4 h3 depending upon the requirement and this is what hr tag gives an horizontal row below of that heading and everything apart from these five lines of code four lines of code sorry everything is fine and which is very similar to you which is very familiar and very simple and coming to this point of code here to generate an to generate to generate a an order list first we need to collect the points what points we are going to render in an order list format so uh, in this case i have a requirement that milk tea and coffee these three points i should be uh, generated in uh, in the order list format so these milk tea coffee are called as list indexes means li so what i will do is we will write just will as of now i will close this one and i will write a code ul open close use and space u li list index what are the indexes what we want we want to put in an order list that we need to mention here milk li close hit enter 
give another li milk and go to the output what we want t next t list to close next next to coffee and finally close the ul this is what a simple code that we can write and save this one and this is what a notepad plus plus uh, editor i am using this is very simple launch in firefox see this is what milk tea coffee milk tea coffee milk tea coffee milk tea coffee we are able to see two times because here already there, there is a two types of two times we have given the code so that's the problem that it's showing two times if i remove this one the first one and if you save this one this is what a save option come to mozilla firefox and save it this is what we can render and another list in the browser so this is what simple simple trick that we done we are done with the rendering of another list and now how to generate different types of another list in html this is what the default type we have not specified any type here to the another list to render on the page but we have three types of another list in html that we can generate see if you go to the code point of view and if you give type attribute equals to circle and save this one refresh it see the bulleting points has been changed from disk to circle type and if in place of circle if we give square See, the bulleting points again change to a square type. So what we'll do, we'll put all the three types of code in one page and we'll see what will be the output of that. Here, what I will do is I will give this as a disk. This I will change from square to circle. And I will refresh this page once again. See, first one is disk type, second one is circle, and third one is milk. A uh, third one is square type. Sorry. If we remove this type and if we leave it as default then also it will show as disk only see this is what disk type means an unordered list can be displayed in a disk format by default until and unless we specify externally giving the type of the unordered list if we give type is called a circle then the disk type will be changed to circle and uh, and also if we give the square type it will change to square type by default it is disk it is not uh, externally there is no need of specifying the type equal disk if you want to uh, render the output in the form of disk type these are the three possible ways that we can render an another list in html and the next concept that is how to nest the another list i mean nesting of another list is nothing but inserting an another list in within the another list that we will see how to nest an unordered list within an unordered list. See, this is what the code actually. See, to, to see this one is very simple. Uh, if we remove this one.
I will open in another one. For now, I will remove all this one. So this was simple an order list format. I'm giving slash li here. Now this was a simple one. I'm sharing this one with on the desktop and I will run or run in Firefox. Save and here this I have to take the HTML extension. Where is HTML extension? Or uh, directly you can try this as hypertext. This is what HTML extension. Save this one. Now run this one in Firefox. This is what a simple an order list. Now what we'll do is we will do some coding here to insert another an order list within an, within an order list that we need to specify within li means hit enter beside of milk now here within this li i just want to categorize milk into two types of milk that is in this way milk categorized into cow milk buffalo milk so what we'll do is here we will give ul close hit enter again close ul within this what we'll do is we will give an li and what we are going to tell is milk can be categorized into this is the way milk cow milk buffalo milk here milk it is categorizing into cow milk close li buffalo milk this is the way we can give now you can close this one you can delete this one and this is what you need to give ul done now save this one and see in output and refresh the page see Milk has been categorized into cow milk and buffalo milk. And further, if you want to categorize in the same way, T. So hit enter beside of T and just copy this one, control C and paste this one. T. Output should be in this format. So a green tea, regular tea. Save this one and switch to the browser and see the output. Green tea, regular tea. And next one is cold coffee, regular coffee. Hit enter. We are right cold coffee. Hot coffee. Save this one. The freshest one, cold coffee, hot coffee. See, and uh, I just want to subcategorize again this cold coffee into cold coffee one, cold coffee two, and regular coffee as regular coffee one and regular coffee two. So what we'll do is here press one more time, enter beside of cold coffee. Just copy this one, 
ul and paste it. What we'll do is we'll use we will give some alignment like, like this one. Now here copy this cold copy paste here give it as one give it as two in a similar fashion copy this one and hit hot copy here what we'll do is instead of this cold we'll write hot save this one refresh it on the browser see cold coffee has been changed to cold coffee one cold coffee two and if you if you keenly observe this one the bulleting points will be in an order that the first parent bullet point will be in disk type and the second will be in circle type and the third hierarchy will be in a square type this will be given by default by the html and if you want to specify if you want to change the type of the bullet that we can also change by using the type attribute this is what the lists can be rendered in html so i hope you guys enjoy this video and keep comments and if you have any doubts please comment thanks for watching this video bye bye hi guys welcome to html tutorials this is anil once again back in this tutorial today as i promised in this trick class today we are going to talk about order list uh, what actually an order list is lists are of three types on order order and definition and yesterday we have completed an order list and today we are going to discuss about order list order list is the way of presenting the items or points in the form of numbering system lettering system or roman number system or in alphabetical order system which will be in a sequenced order so we will go to the in depth of that using the html editor this would be the code looks like how to write an order list code and the output of that code will be shown in the browser this will be an order list an example of order list milk tea coffee these are the in list indexes or the points which we are going to show in an order list format order list is nothing but a numbering format or an alphabetical order or a roman number order the fashion which the text can be shown so this would be an best example of order list so how we can develop this kind of uh, format in html if you go to the code point of view this would be the code this these three lines of code you are pretty much familiar with these three lines of code and these two lines of code html body and h2 tag and hr tag and this is the only code that you need to concentrate today that is order list is nothing but ol tag this is called an ol tag ol tag open ol tag closing within that we need to specify the list indexes by using li tag li open li close li open li close li open li close so within that li open and li close we need to give the bulleting points or text what we want to produce here i have given milk tea coffee as the text and once if i save this one and if i run in a browser then the output will be in this format which which is quite similar like an order list just the case here the only difference is that instead of ul we are giving ol ul stands for an order list and ol stands for order list this is the only difference between an order and order list and if you go to the properties and attributes of this order list and how many ways we can represent this order list and what would be the best approach of nesting this order list that we'll be discussing later now if we come to the attributes of this order list the first attribute is type attribute 
type equals to by default it takes the numbering system 1 2 3 normal number as a default numbering system for order list even if we give externally also there will be no difference in the output if we refresh this one there is no difference in the output in place of 1 if we give caps lock a I mean uppercase alphabet a and if you save this one and if you see the output see a b c will be in a sequenced fashion in place of a if I give small a and if I refresh this one small a b c in place of small a if I give roman numbers roman number 1 to give a roman number 1 press caps lock on the keyboard and press I so that it looks like Roman number one. Save this one and check the output. See Roman number one, two, three. If you have more number of list indexes, then it will be shown be in a more number of values. I am giving a more number of list indexes. Let it be milk one, tea one, coffee one. Save this one. Refresh this one. In this way. Roman number values and in place of Roman number value if I give small i then it's small lowercase Roman number letters this is what lowercase Roman number letters and if we give if we don't provide any type value then what happens default value will be the numbering system normal numbers this will be the normal numbers and by default it generates from the number 1 but if requirement comes and if you want to change the numbering system of the start point then we have an attribute like start if you provide a start value like 6 or 7 or anything 9 then the bulleting point number will be starting with the whatever the start point we have provided in the OL tag if you refer this one 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So the importance of start tag is it specifies the OL tag to start from that particular number. And the importance of type tag is to define what type it should be displayed. Here we are let, let us we take it as Roman number 1. But this start value doesn't work with the Roman number 1 or number 2. Oh, it's working. Great and for small letters it's also working this is what start is an attribute which provides the start of the list index number so this is what a normal OL tag functionality can be done in HTML and the possible ways of rendering order list in HTML are basically five types that will be shown in this way first one will be first one will be a number list this is the number list type equal to 1 start equal to 1 second one will be lower case and third one will be roman numbers fourth one will be lower case letters means alphabets fourth one will be upper case letters means capital a capital b these all are the five possible ways we can render an order list in html so if you uh, see all the uh, five possible ways in a single page then this would be the best example this is what the first one number list, lowercase Roman number list, Roman number list, lowercase letters, letters. These all are the five possible ways that we can see an order list in HTML. And if you come to the nested order list, this will be the next order list. See, this is what a combination of all the possible ways of rendering an order list in HTML and that too with nesting of all the order list within the nest another order list 
so how to generate this kind of order nested list we'll go to the code and we'll try and we'll do something what we'll do is we will just copy this one and we'll paste this one here in this one and we'll remove everything here from Remove. Remove. Or else we do something. This will take this one. Now, as per the output, what they want is milk. If you save this one and if you run this code, it gives normal order list. So we have to develop this kind of order uh, nested order list. So within milk, we milk has been categorized into cow milk and buffalo milk with the capital alphabetical order. So what we do is beside of milk, if you press enter and if you give an ol, hit enter, close ol, give li list index and name it as cow milk next buffalo milk close li and save this one and check the output see by default it is giving a number system by default it is giving a number system here 1 and this is 2 but we can externally we can modify the value by giving type so what we will do is we will give you a we will specify the type of that order list type equals to and what we want here we want capital A and capital B so we want alphabetical orders give capital A save this one now refresh this one have been changed next what we need to do under T it should be green tea and regular tea green tea and regular tea ok now what we will do is we will copy this line of code beside of T we will hit and enter and we'll paste this one here what we'll do is we'll give it as green tea green tea and regular tea okay regular tea Save this one, come to the browser, now green tea and regular tea, but it is in alphabetical order. So what actually we need is, we need it in Roman lowercase letters. So what we will do is, we will go to this here and we will give it as Roman letters, small i. Save this one, refresh this one, we have got Roman letters. Now within that green tea, it has been subcategorized into Japanese, Chinese, Sri Lankan green tea with Roman letter. So what we'll do is we will categorize the green tea here now. Again, copy this one. Press enter beside of green tea. What we need the only uh, the thing that we need to remember is if we want to insert a new uh, order list within an order list, then we need to specify that it it within the li then only it works so press enter view some kind of formatting or make it alignment little bit right uh, right side and here what we need to give is japanese chinese sri lankan japanese 
Chinese and we need to have one more ally so what we'll do is copy and we'll hit enter and we'll paste it go to home bam, 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 bam. and the Chinese you know, it is Sri Lankan Sri Lankan or Siloan now save this one go to the browser and check it we have got Japanese, Chinese, Sri Lankan. But the Japanese, Chinese and Sri Lankan should be in uppercase Roman letter. So what we'll do is we will give it as instead of small i we will give it as caps i. Then it will change into that format. It has been changed. Now the next uh, target is to change the regular T. Japanese green tea, Chinese, Sri Lankan to numbering system. What we'll do is We'll save this one and we'll delete this one. Now what we'll do is we'll copy this one, the entire thing. And what we'll do, we'll hit an enter beside of regular T. And we will go and we'll paste the code. Instead of this small i, we'll give what it has, numbering system. So according to this output, the number should start with 3. So what will we specify 3 here? Type equals to 1 and give the start value as start equals to 3 so that the numbering system will start from 3 go to the output and check see we have got 3 4 5 and next coffee coffee should categorize into 2 cold coffee and hot coffee so what we'll do is Hit enter beside of four copy. Paste it. Give it a small a. Remove type and start and everything. In place of here, give it as Remove this one. Cold coffee, hot coffee. Save this one. Refresh this one. We have got the same output as as shown in the last this one. See everything is quite similar. Yes. Now this is this is the way that we can uh, implement order list in HTML. The basic the summary of this today's class is order list can be represented in five ways. That is, first one is numbering system, second one is letter system, uppercase letter system, lowercase letter system, and the third one is uppercase or caps Roman letters, and the last one is lowercase Roman letters. These are the five possible ways that we can render an order list in HTML and also we have seen the nested order list with all the possible various uh, types of order list and also we, we have an option in order list to uh, start the number of order list at which point we can start and where to cl close that we have an option in HTML and order list will be useful in uh, defining the text or the points in a structured and sequenced manner i hope guys you enjoy this video and in the next class i will be teaching you the definition and uh, description list thanks for watching if you have any comments please uh, keep comments on my videos bye bye hi guys welcome to html tutorials today we are in class 10 today we are going to discuss about the definition list and if you go to the deck what all lists in html that we studied in class Eight and class nine, we have completed unordered and order list. If we today, as for this class, we are going to discuss about definition or description list. What actually definition or description list is? Definition list organize terms and the definitions in pairs. I mean, if you want to club a data definition and its description in in the form of bulleting points or in the form of 
points then we can use this data definition list or description list in which if we go to the code point of view in html syntax the dl stands for definition list dl tag stands for definition list and dl tag is used in conjunction with dt and dd tags dt is nothing but data term and dd stands for data description so if you go to the code point of view this would be the code that how we can uh, define a definition list in html here this would be the output t is nothing but a data term and brown drink is nothing but data description t milk is nothing but a data term and white drink is nothing but data description coffee dt dd water dt and colorless drink stands for dd so whenever a case comes if you want to specify its description then we can use data or definition list in html so how we can write this point of code in html we will go to the notepad and here we will start dl definition list open definition list close use some space press tab now here we will what we'll do is t so t is the heading we will be putting it in dt data term close dt next whatever another side heading is milk so dt milk close in the same way copy this one control c control v enter control v and next coffee and water in place of t replace it with coffee and this one is fourth one let us take it as water okay done save this one and try to run it in firefox see we have got tea milk coffee and water in a format but it is not giving any type of description for that so in case if you want to provide a description for tea as a to specify tea as a brown drink milk as a white drink coffee as a black drink water as a colorless drink so if you want to provide any description for that data term then we can use dd or data description tag followed by dt tag hit one enter here give dd and t as brown drink to specify a description give an hyphen brown drink close dd copy this one paste this one milk as white drink paste this one and coffee as black drink hit one more enter followed by dt paste this one and name the color water as colorless drink save this one by pressing control s i am using a notepad plus plus editor uh, in place of notepad launch it in firefox so this is what how we can give description to the data terms here t stands for data term dt and brown drink stands for data definite uh, data description dd the combination of all these dt and dd is nothing but dl that is nothing but data description list so this is the way that we can uh, create a description or definition list in html and this is quite simple comparing to ordered and unordered list in order and an order list we have so many ways that we can present it but in definition list there is there are no ways to create 
it in a different way this is the only way that we can create a definition list and this is quite simple comparing to other lists i think you guys enjoy this video thanks for watching video if you have any comments please comment hi guys welcome to html tutorials today we are in class 7 this is anil and today i am going to teach you about block level elements and inline elements basically do and span elements if we go with the deck html elements can be grouped together with the do and span elements and html elements are of two types it has been categorized in two types the first one is inline elements and second one is block level elements inline elements some of the examples of inline elements are anchor tag bold tag image tag td tag etc and some of the examples of block level elements are on order list h1 tag table tag paragraph tag etc so what actual an inline element and block level element are if we go with the html inline elements first html inline elements are normally displayed without starting a new line so for example if we can if we consider this one a tag and b tag and td tag or image tag if if we use these tags in html then it won't occupy or it won't provide a space before of it and after of it i mean vertically it won't give any line of break before or after but if we concentrate here in this place ul tag h1 tag table tag or p tag if you use these tags in html then automatically what happens a line of break will be generated before the p tag or after the p tag before the table tag or after the table tag before the h1 tag or after the h1 tag and also for ul and ol for all the lists it will generate a line of break before and after the block level elements so this would be the exact difference between inline elements and block level elements so if we go with the description part of html inline elements are normally displayed without starting a new line examples are anchor tag b tag image tag td tag and html block level elements are normally start and end with a new line when displayed in a browser this is the only difference between block level elements and inline elements so span tag comes under inline elements and div tag comes under block level elements we will discuss about those two elements in next slide so span element span element is nothing but an inline element as what i have talked earlier if we go with the description part of span element in the html language span element is an inline element that can be used as a container for text span or div both are used for holding some content used as a container for text but it has some variation span doesn't provide a line of break before and after but div generally provides a line of break before and after that's the only difference between span and div span comes under inline divs comes under block level the span element has no special meaning actually when used together with css the span element generally span element doesn't have any meaning span element doesn't has any special meaning actually but it can be used with the css it it will get some kind of functionality that we can use with css if we want to apply some style attributes to a particular line of text then we can use span tag for that particular line of text and within that span tag we can provide style attribute with the help of style attribute we can render the output of the text in our way or in our own wish in which color we want or which uh, style we want that we can apply to that particular text using span tag with the help of style tag 
so only in case of using css tags span will have a meaning and if you talk about div tag div element is nothing but a block level element so it generally gives a line of break before the div tag and after the div tag so in the html language div element is a block level element that can be used as a container for grouping other html elements div can has a capability of grouping other html elements within div tag so div is a block level element which can hold couple of or multiple number of elements within it the div element has no special meaning even div has also no special meaning except that because it is a block level element the browser will display a line of break before and after it so when used together with css the div element has also a uh, style attributes to large block of elements it can be used with css to give some functionality of giving some style attributes for block level elements we can use div tag another common use of the best and the important use of div element is it can be used as a layout generator i mean to design a web page to design a page it can the div element can be used as a layout generator with the help of div tags we can design a layout for a page a layout is nothing but for a page generally it requires a header section body section and bottom section and also it requires a lhn and rhn so this kind of layout can be generated using div tag and previously before to div tag we used to use table tag but table tag is not the correct way of using for layout of the page it is mainly used the table tag is mainly used to display the data in a tabular data or in a tabular form so don't use table tag for designing layouts of the page or web page the best approach of designing a page is using div tags and this is what the introduction of div and span elements so if we go to the core point of view of div and span elements and what we can do with uh, div and span elements we will see with the core point of view this is generally a normal html program this is what i have collected some text without this text it's a normal simple html program i am copying some text on this page this is what and if we closely observe if we closely observe in the html language and after this one i have manually hit the enter i have already entered and here also i hit the enter here 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 and almost every line at the end of the every line i have hit the enter so i if if i save this file if i save this file it's already saved if i save this file and if you, if i run it on any browser today as per now i am using firefox what happens but whatever the text i have kept in the body tag this is the body tag this is the text i have kept in the body tag but i have already formatted with a line of break after html elements but if you see in the output after the html elements there is no line of break so what actually it means is whatever the text we put inside the body tag that will be shown without a line break if we want to provide a line break of our html elements then manually we need to give a break tag there otherwise it won't treat it as a break if i give manually a break tag here and if i save this one and if i check it on the browser the output see here what happened the, we got an html elements and after that we got a break so in the same way we can give breaks here so i am giving breaks after each and every line break 
break, break, break. And if I save this one, and if I open it in browser, now everything was in a per perfect formatting. So now what happens? If I want to place this everything, the entire text into a group, so what I can do? I just want to make this entire text into some particular group or I want these first top three lines into a particular group and these top three bottom three lines into a particular group and I just want to render these particular three lines of code in red color and this in green color. So how can I achieve this kind of functionality in HTML? So the simple way is by using div tag, block level elements. Block level elements are used for grouping large blocks of elements. So large blocks in the sense, block is nothing but it's a combination of one or two lines. It's a couple of lines is nothing but block. So here I'm using a div tag and I'm closing a div tag here. In the same way, I will hit enter. I will open a div tag here. I will close the div tag here and I will save this one and I will check it on the output on the browser. This is already saved. So, what I will do is now I will apply a style for this div style equals to this is what style is an attribute of CSS. If you have an idea of cascading style sheets, then you will be easily understanding what is a style attribute and what's the purpose of style attribute. Don't worry, it is a very simple concept. If, if you want to apply any kind of styling for particular text, you can use style tag within the element. So what I'm what I'm planning to do is here, I just want this div element, total this div start here and ends here. So whatever the content inside this div is belongs to this particular div tag. So what I am doing is I just want to render that particular div element text in some particular color. So what I am doing here style equals to quotes and close again one, one more give one more quote so that quotes gets closed here within that quotes what we will do is I will write color colon red semicolon this is what an attribute color is specified with the value red color and if you want to ally, uh, give another attribute like font hyphen weight equals to bold semicolon now we will save this one See what I did is div style color equal to colon red font weight bold. I will save this one. I will switch back to the browser and I will refresh this one. See what happened. That particular three lines of code belongs to first div. The color has been changed to red color and the font weight has been changed to bold. Means caps. Uh, I mean sorry not caps. It's uh, bold is nothing but uh, boldness means little bit stronger stronger than the normal font weight and in the same way what I will do is I will copy this style attribute code and I will paste for the second div and I will give this as green green and I don't give this as bold I will remove this one I will save this one now I'll check this. So this is what the the top three lines have been changed to red color, and this has been changed to green color. And in the same way, if we, if I add some more attribute like font family, font family equals to Arial. I will refer this one. See, this is what Arial font. 
prior to this it was in some other font and it has been changed to Arial. This, this, this is the way we can render the output by using div tag. Div tag is mainly used to group some of the block, some of the elements and also it's not an, a normal text we can group we can group some elements even within the div tag i just want to place this as an hr h1 tag and i'll close this one i'll hit enter here it won't be a problem for us because if we do enter also it won't take a break whatever the thing we do in core point of view that will not effect on the browser until unless it is a uh, HTML predefined element or a predefined tag and I will close this h1 tag I will save this one in the same way I will what I will do is I will give a p tag here and I will close this p tag so whenever I am closing a p tag there is no need of using this br tag actually p tag itself contain an open break and close break what I will do refresh this one this is what the way we can do some kind of uh, fun, uh, magic with the uh, div tag so if we go to the span tag see this is what simple code I have placed everything in this div tag and I just want only the particular line I want only this particular line this particular line to some format so what I will do I will give, give a span tag in front of this one and I will close this one and I will go to the end of that one and I will close the span tag and even for span tag we can use styling style equals to colon colon double quotes now I will give color as blue I will save this one and I will check this on the browser see this particular line of text has been changed to blue color without giving a break here see I have not give I have used this particular line of text within the span tag span is an inline element so it generally not provides a line of break before or after so what happened in the output everything is appended to the prior text like after large level of block large level of large blocks of content is the uh, following uh, is the prior text to this one and this text was followed to large blocks of content so if in case in case in place of this span if i use div what happens we will check now We will remove this span at the end of this one and we will give div here. Now in place of span I have used div and I will check this in the output. I am going to refresh now. See what happened. It has been moved to the next line and also after table a line of break is provided. Before another common a line of break is provided and after using tables also line of break is provided. So by using div the only difference between span and div is both are used for giving some uh, styling for the text and also both are used to con hold the content or used to group the content but the exact difference between div and span is div is a block level element span is an inline element block level elements provides a line of break before and after but span doesn't do that and divs are mainly used for page layouts and spans are not specifically used for page layouts and my sincere advice is don't use tables for page layout use divs for page layout it will be uh, more dynamic than tables and tables are used only to represent data in a table format other than that it is not good to use for creation of page layouts and i hope today i have given a much uh, introduction about div and span and also give i also gave the core point of view and some work on 
do and span tags i hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching if you have any doubts please comment on the video definitely i will give the uh, feedback or the answers for that thanks for watching bye bye hi guys welcome to html tutorials this is anil back in this tutorial today in this class you will be learning how to create iframes using iframe tag this is class 12 and this is anil okay what do you mean by iframes okay let me open my blog what is an iframe in html how we create iframe in html iframe can be created in html using the tags called iframe frame border height width scrolling align these tags are used in creating an iframe section on html page so what is an iframe actually iframe is a part or a section of any html page on which we can show the content of complete web page of the same page or external page as an information or as an advertisement so i will show you an example so this is what the code i have given on my blog so if you see this uh, code this is very simple code html open html close body open body close and h3 tag here I have given some in, in introduction text like here i am showing an iframe which is a page from one of my other blogs about powerpoint so i do have a couple of blogs on a couple of technologies like powerpoint excel html uh, and computer tips etc etc so now today in this example i am going to show you uh, one of my blogs about powerpoint as an iframe in this html page so i have given that blog link using href equals to my blog link agr powerpoint blogspot.com target i have given as blank and i have given the link name and i have sp specified the iframe src equals to which page i would like to show as an iframe so this is what the blog with this is my blog powerpoint blog url so i have given my blog powerpoint blog url as a source and given frame border equal to one so that iframe border will be given as one height height i have mentioned as 450 pixel width as 1200 pixel scrolling i have given as yes it's up to you you can give no if you don't want scrolling if you want scrolling you can give yes if you, and i have also mentioned a comment your browser does not support iframes concept if if your browser doesn't support iframes concept then this paragraph will be shown instead of your iframe so this i have kept everything in iframe iframe open iframe close that's it this is this is the only uh, code that we are using in this tutorial so this is what i have created with that code let me refresh this one so this is what iframe the entire section this section what you're seeing this is called iframe and i have given scrolling equal to yes so you can see the scroll bar vertical scroll bar and this is one of my blogs about powerpoint and if you get free time go ahead and open my powerpoint blog and you can see all my blogs information here this is my html blog in the same way powerpoint blog excel blog and computer tips and blog so these all are my different different of blogs so if you have time go ahead and open these blogs so this is what i am i am trying to show some other page existing web page on online web page on my page in some part of my page so showing some some other page in some part of our page is called an iframe got it so this is very simple and easy using iframe tag you can create that this is the two lines of code you have to use for creating iframe i hope this video helps you a lot in learning iframes and if you have any questions please put your comments i will try to address your comments questions as soon as possible and please subscribe to my tutorial thank you for watching have a great day bye bye hi guys welcome to html tutorials this is anil back in this tutorial this is class 13 in this class uh, i will be explaining about input type text box in html yeah, what is input type and how we use that input type so how to use that input type in html 
So I, before that, I would like to explain you what actually an input type is and in real time how we are using that. So if you open the facebook.com, generally it will ask for your login credentials to enter into the Facebook session, right? So whatever you are, you are seeing here, the first name, this text box, this is called input type text box and this is also a text box. This is also a text box and this is also a text box and this is called drop down menu and this is called radio button and this is called submit button for that we, they given a label called create account so these all are under form so this is an online based on today's class we will be learning how to create this text box so to create this text box we have to put the text box in a form so we'll go to the code and we'll write so this is what as per our session we will going to show you how to write the code for this example if you click the submit button in the below form the form data will be sent to a page which will be defined in action equals to in the form opening tag so okay this is first name what is called is label and this area is called text box and we have default by default we have given a value called anil gaud and the second label is called last name and this is again again another text box by giving the input type equal to text box and we have already specified the value default value as ramagoni and we also provide a submit button and we have labeled it as submit so once we click this what happens see the output first name equals to anil plus gaud and last name equals to ramagoni so this information is carried and sent to the page to the page which we will define in the form in the action element so i will show you the page source of this one so if you see this is a very simple page this is called form form action equals to we have not specified where these values should go and sit but for for now we are not specifying a what what is an action tab just for this class you will be learning how to create a text box this is the text box so to create a text box what you will do is you will write a simple line of code called input type equals to text input type equal to text and name equals to first name and whatever the value you provide that will be shown in the text box here if, if you give some other value instead of anil gaud then it will be shown as per your input value and similarly to give a line break i have provided two breaks of line and also i have given another input type equal to text name equals to last name value equals to ramagoni and again i gave two lines of break by using br tag i gave input type equal to submit and this button is also input type so i have given input type equal to submit and i have specified the value equal to submit right now everything is done we have closed the body we have opened the body here we have opened the html here we have closed the html and this is talk type so it's very simple code we have saved it and this is the output so this is the way how you can create text boxes in a form in html this will be very useful in creating a online form to submit your data or to capture the user end user information through a online form i hope this video helps you a lot if you have any questions on this video please put your comments on the comment section i will try to address your questions and keep looking for my next videos please subscribe to my tutorial have a great day bye bye